Hello. Today we will be working with a problem from number theory. And using this problem, we will learn a lot of things. So that's the purpose of solving this problem, to learn certain concepts that can be used elsewhere. So what will we learn? Our goals, our learning goals are something like this. Take number theoretic ideas to geometric patterns. So we will learn how to do that. We'll take one example of that. We will also learn a notion of action of forces, let's say forces, action of forces on a set and how to use that action to learn more about the set, more about divisibility and stuff like that. We will learn about orbits and we will learn about fixed points in number theory and combinatorics. So there is a lot of things to unpack in this video. This is just one problem. It came up in, a, in our Mathematics Olympiad program. It is so beautiful that I wanted to give you at least some, some flavor of what the problem is about. And maybe you can enjoy the remaining part by solving it on your own. Okay. So what is the problem? So the problem is like this. So here is the problem. P is the prime number. So P is any prime number. Then show that, show that 2P choose P is congruent to 2 modulo P square. This is the question. So I'll give you an example of what this means. And if you don't know this congruency symbol, that is the three bars coming one after the other, don't worry. All that this means, so maybe I can just use translation, translation into common man's language. I just change this a little bit. So this is, this means that 2p choose p minus 2 is divisible by p square. So this, this particular thing in common man's language means p square divides 2p choose p minus 2. And what is 2p choose p? It is the number of ways of selecting p things out of 2p things. The number of ways, number of ways of selecting p things out of 2p things. Oh, everything distinct. Okay. All right, so we understand this statement of the problem. So I'll give you an example, an illustration that this actually works. So let's take the example for p is equal to 3. Okay, so what is the case for p is equal to 3? Okay, so 2p is 6 then. So we want to show that 3 square, p square, which is 9, 9 divides. 2p choose p my 2p choose p minus 2, which basically means 6 choose 3 minus 2. Okay, so what is 6 choose 3? 6 choose 3 is 6 3 6 by 6 times 5 times 4 by 3 times 2 times 1 minus 2. So this is 20 minus 2, which is 18. So that's what 2p choose p minus 2 means. In this particular example so this is 18 and of course 9 divides 18 so works for p equal to 3 you can check it for other primes let's say you can check it for p equals to 5 and put a comment in the description that what is the precise numbers for p equals to 5 in this particular problem okay so that's our goal we want to show that 2p choose p is congruent to 2 mod p square or in more common man's term, p squared divides 2p choose p minus 2. So how do we go, go about that? And how can we learn this many things using this one problem? 
So what is the first step? What do we do? The first step is this, that for p equals to 3, we will show how to convert this number theory problem into more of a geometric intuition. So this is a journey from number theory to geometry. So what do we want to show? We want to show this 2p choose p minus 2 p squared divides that. That's what our goal is. So 2 times p, this basically means 2 times 3 in this case, which is 6. We will make a tablet like this. Make a tablet like this here. And we will divide this into three columns, uh, two columns and three rows. So this is 0, 1, 2, and this is alpha and beta. Okay. So there are precisely six blocks in this particular picture. Right. So we want to find out six choose three or which is 2p choose p in this particular case. So we want to choose, we want to select three out of these six blocks, three out of these six blocks. So maybe we can mark them. This is one way of selecting three blocks out of these six blocks. Okay, we can also put crosses in the remaining three blocks. But notice that we don't really have to do that because that's automatic. Once you put three dots, three red dots, you know exactly where you are putting the remaining green dots. Okay. So every time you select three out of six, you are actually creating this pattern. So for example, I could create another tablet Let's create another tablet like this. And maybe this is this one. I put three dots here and I put three crosses here. This is another way of selecting three out of six things. Okay. There is a reason why I'm doing this. Um, I, if I say, okay, I put a cross, I put a cross at beta comma 1 okay so this is alpha this is beta this is 0 1 2 you know okay there is a cross in this particular box okay which there is of course so instead of just drawing it there is a way of actually writing this out in betas and 0 1 alpha and betas and 0 1 and 2s okay so 6 choose 3 means there are that many tablets that we can draw. There, is, there are that, that many tablets with these 3 dots and 3 crosses that we can draw. So that's sort of the meaning of 2p choose p that we will keep in our mind. We will put p number of dots and p number of crosses in this 2 cross p box or grid you can think of it as a grid maybe yeah. okay now we have taken care of this okay so in this problem there was this 2p choose p we have taken care of this part we will now think about p square so we have the tablets we will now create the forces. So step two, we will create the forces. So these tablets are, all, they, they, there are these 20 tablets, six choose three is 20. There are these 20 tab tablets that are put in a bag and we will be creating forces that will act on these tablets in a certain way. So what are these forces? Well, these forces are created by crossing 
these two sets. So there are p number of numbers starting with uh, 0, so ending at p minus 1. In this case, starting with 0 and ending at 2, because I'm taking the specific example of p equal to 3. So I'll cross them. So cross them in the sense, then I'll get 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. So there are precisely nine forces or p square forces here. See, this is how we go into the underlying concept of what's going on. If we take a specific example, that's wonderful because our mind can process these specific numbers faster than it processes letters. So we can now focus on what's actually going on at the back end instead of worrying about the algebraic notation because that's where the real fun is, right? So there we will think about each of these nine duplets. But for us, for the moment, this is just two numbers. We'll think about these nine duplets as nine forces that have the power to transform the tablets. So in the step one, in the step one, we found there is a bag in which there are these 20 tablets. There are these 20 tablets. I could not draw all of them. There are 20 tablets. And maybe I can draw a miniature of them here. Each of them containing a pattern of dots and crosses, three dots and three crosses. So maybe I can even do that. <laughs> it's like miniature art. I probably would choose a different color, something like this. So I should put dots and crosses in each of these little tablets. So in step one, we obtain that. And in step two, we have obtained this magical forces, which have the power to transform our tablets in a certain way. So let's talk about the action now. It's very simple again. I will take one of the tablets. So maybe this one. I'll take one of the tablets. And I'll draw it here and the cross here and I will take a force. Let's say I take this force 2 comma 1. I'll take this force and I will let this force act on this tablet and tell you exactly how it's acting. So what will it do? Well, 2 will act on the first column and 1 will act on the second column. How will it act? Well, it 2 will just push by 2 steps and 1 will just push by 1 step. So, but how do you push this topmost dot? Well, you think of it cyclically. So, if it's pushed by 2 steps, it will come back. This is one step for the topmost dot. And then from there it goes hops to the next one. Okay, so I'll tell what happens to the topmost red dot. The topmost red dot is here now since it's pushed by two steps. Okay. Okay, now the bottom most red dot, this one, this will push. Will, this will get pushed by two steps as well. So it will hop on to the place of the topmost dot. So it's here now. So maybe I call this one. So this is one. Maybe I call this one two. So this is two because it hops by two steps. And you really don't have to worry about the cross because the cross will occupy the remaining position. Or you can check. It will go one step and cyclically it will come back to occupy this one. So it's here. Okay. Now this particular red dot right here, this particular red dot, it will go by two steps. It will go by two, one step, I'm sorry, one step because 
the second column has one here so it will go by one step to this position so I'll write like this and the remaining two spots will be occupied by the crosses there you go this particular tablet transformed into this one when the force is 2 comma 1 okay all right so we have learned about tablets a geometric representation of 2 pictures p we have learned how the forces are acting on the tablets we will stop out here in this particular video because it's getting too long in the next video which is a sequel of this one we will talk about how to use this action and learn about orbits and how to use that to talk about the divisibility okay till then keep on doing great mathematics and i will see you in the next one